I finally done it. I put together the perfect kit. I'm in my new apartment in New York City and uh, I've been dying to make some content and just get reconnected with the YouTube space. But I've had to, as you can see, the place is a little bit of a mess set up and I had a bunch of jobs back, 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 but now I'm free. Anyway, what am I talking about? The perfect kit doesn't exist, right? But I really thought long and hard about exactly what I wanted to create here um, with the cameras that I purchased from Leica. And I wanted to get it so slimmed and perfect that every camera made sense and every lens made sense and I wouldn't need anything else. I wouldn't need for nothing, right? So let's just get right into it. What, what am I talking about here? So this paired with the Q2 are my absolute dream team. So typically what I'll do here is with the SL2S, I use this as my street photography camera and I'll mount an M lens to it. I have the M to L adapter, but I also really fell in love with the 24 to 70 F2.8 because it's constant. I'm gonna be completely honest and blunt up front. It's not as good as the 24 to 90. There's less contrast. Obviously it's not as sharp. Do I care about sharpness that much? Not really, especially in my street photography, but when I'm working, I, I do appreciate something that's a little bit more, um, has some more resolve and power than this particular lens, but it's undeniable that for the price and for the constant F2.8 of this lens, it's an absolute incredible workhorse. And if you ever wanna do some video with your SL2, or your SL2S, then this is the better choice for video. But if you're just someone that's shooting photo work professionally, then I'm gonna tell you to go get the 24 to 90 because um, most of the time when I was shooting that lens, I would shoot it at about five, six to F8. So that whole variable thing really didn't get in my way professionally as you're shooting on set or if you're setting up some lighting work. A lot of the times you're gonna be in that space. It's rare that you're gonna be shooting something shallow um, Maybe you do, I don't know. I don't know what field you work in and when that's acceptable, but if you do it, more power to you, um, go for it. Uh, okay, so what I'll do is now, as I walk around in the streets, I put the uh, 35 millimeter Summicron from this camera onto this with the M to L adapter, and I keep these two on me at all times. So I'll leave the house with this Q2, which I bought with my own money, brand new. Actually, I was at Adorama and me and my brother were joking around and asked if they had any Q2s in stock and he actually laughed at me. And then he was like, but you know what, let me check. And they had one. And I felt like I had to put my money where my mouth is, so I ended up leaving there with a Q2. Uh, I had a couple lenses to sell on the spot, so I knocked the price down a little bit on this thing, which was great. Originally, um, like a, I don't know if I told you guys this in a previous video, but they sent me a couple free cameras to keep because I don't know if I call myself an ambassador for the company, but they're blessing me and I'm creating a lot of content for them on the side. I film a bunch of things and they also promote my photography. So I am part of the Leica family. I love them. So I asked for a Q2 and an SL2 and they said the Q2 is back ordered forever. So they gave me the SL2 and they gave me the M10R. So these cameras were from Leica for me to keep and I absolutely love these. But in the back of my mind, I always wanted the Q2 because I have cataracts really badly. I am such a rangefinder shooter. Obviously, I love rangefinders. I have the M7 here. This was my first Leica purchase ever, uh, along with this 28 millimeter Elmerit and 35 millimeter Summicron. And I love that experience. So it made sense for me to want the M10R, but unfortunately, because my right eye is getting so bad, I don't really like shooting um, the rangefinders that much now because I like to actually go a bit slower with them and compose my shots. But this, these two with the EVF have been an absolute blessing. So if you're someone with really shitty vision like me and you're looking for something to shoot, absolutely pick up a Q2 and then do yourself a favor, grab an M lens with the M to L adapter and throw it on this camera because shooting with this camera, street photography is like the colors that I'm able to achieve, the dynamic range of this sensor is mind boggling. Um, it's the first time in a long time that I've been editing my photos and I'm loving the color that I'm getting out of them. This has been my portrait camera on the streets. So I keep the 28 on me constantly and I'm firing this thing from the hip, firing it from the eye. This is more of a frantic, aggressive approach for me when I'm shooting street photography. Occasionally I'll take a portrait with this, but if the person's feeling it and I'm feeling the vibe, I'll reach into my bag and I'll pull out my SL2 with the 35 millimeter on it and I'll just be like, you know what? This is such a good moment. I'm gonna fire off a couple portraits on my real camera. They don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but this looks legit and it looks way more serious than taking photos with this. So it's almost kind of like, you know, 
I'm asking for permission to shoot them more professionally and uh, spend more time with them, you know what I mean, when they start to see. So sometimes, you know, I'll grab a couple with the Q2, but the moment that I pull this out, I let them know, okay, let's get some real photos going on here. So I take this out and I've been shooting a ton of portraits with this camera and carrying two cameras around was kind of a pain in the ass back in the day when I had this camera and the M10P and the M10 and the M10 monochrome. I used to always carry these two in tandem. Um, not the M10R, but the models that I just listed because I would keep black and white film in here. And I eventually started putting color and the idea was that I would shoot all my color stuff digitally and just keep this to black and white. The two camera setup can be kind of, it's cumbersome, it's heavy. Um, it's been super hot in New York lately across the world. There's been heat waves <laughs> in America, obviously. Um, so it's been difficult to carry two cameras outside, but I'm training myself to always do that because I think that the results that I'm getting right now are some of the best that I've ever gotten. And I'm really digging the approach. And even though I say that this is the perfect kit, and I do agree that I, I have, this is, I don't need anything else to get anything done besides these cameras right here. I know it sounds so ridiculous. It's like, well, no, there's like a million cameras sitting in front of me. This is so stupid. But the reality is, is that like, <laughs> you need a work camera, right? I absolutely need a work camera. I need a romance camera. I'm not a, a straight up film shooter. So this camera for me is like, when I start getting all nostalgic about film and photography, and I want to slow down and I'm in Paris. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring the film camera because it feels right. You know what I mean? Um, this is also a really, really serious travel cam for me. I love traveling with this. As, as a matter of fact, I said I'm leaving to Aspen at 4 a.m. today. And um, this is always around my neck. I love it. But also, I, I'm going to start shooting more portraits with this. I plan on getting this eye done very, very soon. And once my eye is done and the surgery is over, then this is going to become my A shooter again. And I'll probably pair that with the SL2. Again, this is just an everyday camera. I go to the supermarket. I go to the grocery store. I take my dog for a walk in the morning. This camera is on me constantly, 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 constantly. I absolutely love the way this looks with the 28 millimeter Sumalux. Um, but if I could really go balls to the wall with this kit, I would love to get Sumaluxes all around. I was thinking about selling this 35 millimeter Sumacron. This is a Spir the Aspirical version one for the Sumalux FLE version. And I kind of priced it out. So I was thinking about selling this and this 28 millimeter El Merit, right? So that would give me a 35 millimeter Sumalux. And I think I could get one for these two lenses. And I'd probably pay like a thousand, maybe 2000, somewhere around that price to switch this one out to a 35 millimeter Sumalux. And then what I would really like to achieve is buying a 50 millimeter Sumacron. Now that one I'm not too worried about. Um, if it's a Spirit Bowl, if it's a newer version, just the F2 50 millimeter Sumacron would be more than enough. If I can get a Sumalux, that'd be absolutely incredible because when I walk around and take portraits, I'm realizing that some of the times that I shoot with the Q2 and I grab that portrait first and I switch to the 35, it, I've said this before, like, 35 and 28, it's just a step back or a step forward. It It's almost identical. If you know how to shoot these two lenses and treat them like portrait lenses, then you're gonna get really, really good results. And sometimes I look at the photos and I'm like, these are almost identical. I just step forward and step back. I actually can't tell sometimes which one's the 35 and which one's the 28. So what I would like to do is put a 50 millimeter Sumacron or Sumalux on this, and then I'd have all the Sumaluxes and everybody think I'm a douchebag because I'm rolling around with a kit that's just absolutely absurd. So. That's what I'm working with these days. Um, you know, the Sumo Luxes is like a dream. I don't really need them. I rarely ever, I don't, I don't know how many photos I have at 1.7 on this, not that many. So I know that it's just a lust thing, but I'm super happy with my kit right now as it is. And maybe just, uh, I'll turn the 28 into a Sumo Con and get a 50 millimeter Sumo Con for my portrait stuff, just so there's an actual visible difference in between my portraits and what I take with the 28 on the Q2. But for right now, I think I'm sitting pretty. I think I'm doing pretty good. Anyway, I want to give you guys a quick update about how I've been shooting lately. I hope you enjoyed these photos. I'm super happy to be back in New York and every moment that I get some free time, I'm out shooting. I've been kind of a little, uh, I don't know, uh, self-conscious rolling around with the GoPro. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it's probably just, I gotta knock the cobwebs off. It seems like there's so many trends on YouTube all the time and people are getting over things so quickly. So do you guys like POV videos anymore? Would you prefer I talk about this type of stuff? Um, you know, I have a bunch of beautiful straps that I've like 
you know, really dug and found things that I really enjoy. I can talk about that. I can talk about my process of um, portrait work. But um, yeah, you know, I'm not a teacher. I'm not trying to teach anybody anything. I've realized that about my YouTube channel, but I would like to share my experiences with you. And if you learn something along that way, that's great. But don't ask me about all this mathematical shit. I don't wanna talk about that anymore. So anyway, catch you guys on the next one. Let me know what you're interested in me making now that I'm back in New York. And uh, catch me in Coney Island on Fridays and Saturdays. I go out there every time to shoot. And I've been running into some people out there. So shout out to everybody at 4th of July that I saw. And uh, anybody that's hating and being like, oh, you just go even listen to Metallica. Yeah. I can listen to Metallica. Look at the back of the fucking shirt. You can't even get this shirt unless you went to the concert. Anything. 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 Anything.